What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to continue drawing the Ferrari F12 Berlinetta and today I would like to take a little bit of time to discuss the freedom gradient. Last week we um, worked on gradient mesh and this week I want to concentrate a little bit more on the freedom gradient as I uh, was trying to use gradient mesh on a specific part of this illustration, but it just wasn't working out. And I found that by using the freedom gradient, I was able to get the results that I was after. So here, I'm just going over and adding a couple of details to the rear of the Ferrari. This is all flat shapes uh, with flat color, no gradients. Um, so here I'm just drawing this rear rear uh, reflector and you can see just drawing you know one grouping of circles and copying and pasting those over and over again. Um, so we're just going to go through this area relatively fast as this is a lot of what we've been working on since uh, if you've been following me since the beginning. So we're using the pen tool here and we're just tracing over certain areas of this Ferrari. Now, this is the shape that I want to talk about today. This weird back part that's picking up an odd reflection. So as you can see, I'm trying to use a linear gradient here with about four colors, kind of complicated. And I'm just not getting the result with the linear gradient, obviously. So I've picked up gradient mesh here and I'm trying to use the direct selection tool and grab um, each point and then use the eyedropper tool which is I on your keyboard and going through and selecting different colors for each one of these points within this gradient mesh. So I'm using my keyboard here and I'm just going back and forth using the letter A to pick up the direct selection tool and the letter I to pick up the eyedropper tool and I'm just going back and forth between there. So here I have taken the shape and I've moved it off to the side and I'm trying to just move these points around and see if I can't get this funky shape that's going on. And I try, I go back and forth and I think I finally get frustrated enough with it and I turn it off and I move on to something else. Instead of deleting that entirely, I try to make, I, I redraw the shape. So this is why you can see me using the pen tool and redrawing the shape. Now I'm going to click up here to this little gradient. So you have linear gradient, radial gradient, and now you have freedom gradient. This brings up a bunch of different points, uh, usually starts with two or three, and you can use your direct selection tool to grab these different points and kind of move them around as you see that I'm doing here. Now, just like with gradient mesh, each one of the points on that table, you can assign a color. So I did the same thing here, and it turned out to be exactly what I wanted. So in order to refine it a little bit more, I'm going to select that shape again. And I'm just going to use my color dialog box on each point to assign different colors to each one of these points. So now I have, what, six, seven different points. I wanted to bring in a little bit more of that purple and really start to stretch these colors around to get that funky reflection shape. And you can keep going back and forth with these. You can create as many or as, as few uh, points as you need. And it's, you know, if you've ever worked with paint, it's, it's very much like smearing paint around on the canvas and getting it exactly where you want. And you can kind of rework it as many times as you want, and it'll never dry because it's technically not paint. So now that I have that figured out a little bit, I'm not as worried about making sure that that reflection is exact. Uh, that's part of your creative liberty there. So now I'm just drawing a few shadows and a few highlights here using uh, a gradient with white on both ends and with one end's opacity set to zero. And this is starting to define the rear of this Ferrari. 
Again, always going back using that direct selection tool to adjust all the points within this shape to make sure that they line up exactly how I want them. And again, I try not to cut anything out of these tutorials. So if you see a lot of those flashing on and off, that's me trying to just turn off a shape and turn it back on to make sure that I'm getting the result that I want. Sometimes it's just, think of it kind of like blinking. So here's another example of a white gradient on both ends with one side's opacity set to zero. And that gives me just a little touch of a highlight and just enough to add enough definition that you can see there's an indentation there on the body panel to, um, to set up for drawing the tail light. So now here I have taken a shape that I drew above for the spoiler. I copied it and I flipped it and reversed it. Uh, and I just wasn't happy with the result. That was kind of, it was kind of like cheating in my mind without having to like redraw the shape again. So instead, which you should always do is just redraw the shape. Um, then it's exactly what you want. I end up mirroring the gradient used above it also below it so that the highlight, the bright part of that gradient kind of lines up with the other one. And now we're starting to get a little bit more definition in the rear of this car here. And that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new layer. And I'm gonna double click here in the layers palette to bring up the layer options dialog box because I certainly don't want this layer to be black. I would not see what I was doing. So we're gonna pick a nice bright color and we're going to choose let's see I've used magenta I've used green so let's go with yellow and we will call this taillight uh, passenger because again right and left I I just don't I'm not in the habit of doing that I usually use driver or passenger so a while back we just created a circle to as a reference point for this taillight and now that we're actually going to draw the tail light, we can use that original circle. And I was trying to use the pen tool to draw this shape, but to be honest, they always look a little wonky. And I usually just like to use an ellipse if I can. So see, I'm trying here with the pen tool you know, picking a point, dragging the mouse out to create that curve. And it looks okay. It doesn't look bad, but if you can see on the left side there, this point that I'm grabbing, that's the problem. So I, I get rid of it. And I think I'm just going to capitalize on this first circle that I drew uh, a while back when we first started this. Okay, so now let's fill this using our eyedropper tool with a dark, deep red. And now we're gonna start to layer brighter color uh, red on top of the like maroon um, so that we can start to define this tail light. Now, I'm just cutting through the um, clear part here because that's going to be covered with gray. So let's assign this a nice bright color, great and to continue on with our layering so that we're not staring at a, a wonky shape let's go ahead and create the clear part of this tail light here so i'm just going to draw a series of ellipses and once i draw the ellipse i pick up the eyedropper tool and select the color right away using the eyedropper tool great and we'll do one more and that'll be a darker gray Perfect. And then basically what I'm doing is I, instead of getting rid of each one of these, I go over to the layer palette and I use the, uh, the eyeball on the left to turn it on and off. So now everything's on and I can see all those ellipses. They're starting to look good. Whoa, sorry for all the pixelation there. And again, turning these on and off to see if anything just looks completely out of place. And this is usually the part where I've got a few shapes down and I think, okay, cool, this is, this is going good. 
let me go in and make some adjustments and refinements so I don't get too far ahead of myself when it comes to making adjustments later on down the road. So if I were to go ahead and draw everything on this tail light, um, going back through like this and making these adjustments would, would get kind of cumbersome. So now there's a lot of blue going on in here. And while that may be true to the photo, it's going to look a little off in the final product. So I'm going to go through each one of these and remove some of the blue of each of these ellipses to make it more of a gray without the blue in it. Awesome. So now that's starting to look like there's some real definition there in this tail light. So now we're just going to draw a couple more highlights being this red highlight color over on the left side. And we'll use the eyedropper tool again to select that. You use a gradient here to have it be very bright at the top and very, and kind of darker towards the bottom since, uh, you know what, let's, let's switch that up. Great. So that's looking kind of realistic. Awesome. So now let's go through because this big swatch of red is kind of in your face and we're going to tone that down just a little bit so that we can layer these very bright areas of red here. So again, just using the pen tool, clicking to make a point and then dragging that line out. Okay, so this area that this shape that we're drawing here, even though it's just a bright red stroke at the moment, is going to be this darker red color that we're layering on top of that very first bright red color that we drew. And that'll make that, uh, that shape appear smaller because we'll have this very complicated maroon color on top. So let's turn everything back on. And now that's starting to look a little more realistic. There's some definition and it's starting to be uh, believable as a tail light. So I know it's hard to see right here, but I'm selecting a couple of these shapes just to make sure they're exactly what I want, the right color. Some of them, yeah, see that doesn't look that great. Let's uh, go back and make that darker. So here I've turned everything off just to double check and you can see I'm turning off and on, off and on to kind of make sure that it looks real or not. And if you're, if you don't see any like major differences when you're turning off and on a layer, then you're doing it right. If, uh, if you do see a lot of differences when you're turning off and on the layer, you should probably go back and either adjust some colors or adjust a couple of points within, uh, within your shape to make sure it's lining up correctly. Great. Now these, these taillights, one of the reasons I chose this Ferrari uh, is that the taillights weren't super complicated. Uh, we had a, I'm part of a local group or a, not a local group, but I'm part of a group on Instagram for other fellow illustrators. And we all got together and decided to draw, uh, pick a Ferrari and draw it. And that was like a Ferrari challenge. So this being my first supercar, I wanted to choose a Ferrari that was a little more unique and not uh, your typical Ferrari that you that you see and you don't see many of these F12s around so that tail light is looking really good but I think we can add just a little bit more to really make it pop and not overdo it there's a fine line between overdoing it and then not adding enough detail so I want to capture these darker shapes and by doing this I'm just going to use a single line and a stroke but I'm going to come over to the stroke dialog box and under profile I'm going to choose profile one um, there's no real name for it um, but it's basically tapering from small to fat to small again and this this saves us some time in drawing the whole physical shape of this kind of curved line we can just use one shape and it's technically a stroke. So um, if you wanted to blow this up to be this huge poster size, um, I would recommend selecting these strokes and 
expanding their appearance under the object dialog box so that they become full shapes. This way, when you go to either shrink it or drag it really big and you don't have constrained proportions turned on, these strokes might get bigger or smaller resulting in some oddities. So usually if I'm going to turn over art to a client that involves strokes, I will go through and make sure that all of the stroke is, um, all of those strokes are actually expanded to become shapes. This makes the much more uh, friendly when sizing the art. Okay, so the driver's side taillight is kind of off in the distance. It's not as important as the passenger side taillight. So in reality, we just need to draw a couple of shapes and then go through with our uh, eyedropper selection tool and kind of make sure they're the same coloring as our other tail light. Awesome. So the ellipse tool is going to be a little hard here because part of it is tucked away. Awesome. So yeah, again, using the eyedropper tool, going back over to the passenger tail light and picking up those exact same colors. So here I was like, I'm just going to kind of grab the two that I want and copy and paste them. And that seemed to do the trick. Again, I turn off and on these layers all the time just to make sure the results that I, uh, I want, I'm achieving. That way when I um, turn everything on towards the end, it's not a big surprise. All right, so when you zoom out, it looks really good. You don't, you don't really have this, um, this weirdness that the uh, driver side tail light is not nearly as uh, complicated as the passenger side tail light because it's not a focal point of this illustration. All right, guys, I think that's where we're gonna wrap up today's video. Uh, I know it was a little short and sweet, but I didn't wanna drag it out too terribly long. Next, uh, I think we're gonna finish this in two more videos. So the next video, we are going to be wrapping up a few details on the windows, the side mirrors, and the lower back part, like the exhaust and all this black uh, plastic that you see at the bottom. I'm sure it's not plastic. I'm sure Ferrari would hate it if I was saying it was plastic, but who cares? Uh, and then we will end like we usually do with the wheels. So two more videos left guys, and then we will wrap up this Ferrari illustration and move on to the next. So as always, Thanks for watching and hitting that like button. If you're interested in more Adobe Illustrator CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Also be sure to check out my Instagram and Patreon pages, which are linked below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.